to the conscious fork. We're going to be forking around with food, consciousness, and much more. My name is Dove. I'm Nicole. And this is my guest for today. She's also my wife and business partner, and we are consciousness mentors, motivational speakers, business mentors, relationship, and much more. So I'm not a professional chef, but I'm really excited to invite you guys into our kitchen to get to know us more and to talk about conscious issues, things that we go through, as well as making food in a sustainable way or an interesting way that we can do together. So today we're going to be talking about um, how food dissects with things like having an eating disorder or having past relationships with food that are unhealthy or problematic and recreating a loving relationship yes. with the food. Also having patterns and behaviors, even if you haven't had that in your life or don't have a loved one with that, um, where you can have a more close and intimate and healthy relationship with food as a whole. So today we're going to be making a lasagna. I Yes, you could call it a lasagna. You're gonna have to stay tuned. There are no noodles. Um, there really isn't any cheese. It's kind of its own thing. And I learned to make that for you almost eight years ago now, yeah. probably. I really don't know where the uh, recipe began or where I put it together. So if it is rooted in somebody else's mm. recipe from the past, I can't give them credit because I don't really know where I got it. And so it's kind of come together as my own creation, even if it was inspired by somebody else. And I'm really excited to share this because it's really comforting um, and very fun to do. And for me, you know, having a good, healthy relationship with food um, and also being able to eat a decent portion of food yes. um, is something that really matters. Yeah, she created this and she created it with a lot of the veggies uh, and roots, or I guess that's a, the sweet potato and zucchini and things that I love so very much. And um, yeah, it's just like this bomb of uh, beautiful frequency. And I love that I could eat a lot of it. It makes me happy because sometimes you <laughs> want to have something that's not only comforting, but that you can stuff yourself with and feel really good about it. Um, it's very important. And I had an eating disorder uh, that started over two decades ago. And uh, my relationship with food was, was really gross. And, and it was very important that I began to learn how to trust food again, love food again, um, have an intimacy with the energy of the food, uh, build that relationship. So it's really important. And Dev and I do a lot to pray over our food. And the fact that you even touch the food before you're creating it, you're producing these enzymes that are gonna help you break the food down. There's just like, there's this romantic thing that happens with your food. <laughs> and it's, it's beautiful when you're in that. And you start to, for me, it really healed and it started to heal parts of me um, and my interaction with food and how, um, you know, I looked at food as this energy source and this combining of energy. That's beautiful. I love that so much. We're going to talk a lot about these different things and also the fact that I chose ingredients that do different uh, things within your body, right? So sweet potatoes being sort of this slow carbohydrate that helps stabilize your sugar and all of these different things and you can use it as processed differently in your body um, it doesn't create this incredible spike in your glycemic index um, like a white flour or something like that right and it's that doesn't mean you can't eat those things but keeping in mind that when we suffer with either blood sugar issues or addiction patterns or uh, eating disorders there are real reasons to watch what happens with your body chemistry so there's something really important to that now I'm going to start jumping right in um, and getting some things prepared so that we can get this moving as we're speaking. Um, I want to let you guys know there in the description you'll see what you need and the recipe and all that but what we're really looking for is the basic components to this is an onion, we've got some garlic, uh, some zucchinis as well as some sweet potatoes, spinach, and then you're going to need about 53 uh, well, let's do it in, in cups. You're gonna need probably about four to six cups of uh, chopped canned or boxed tomatoes. You could do fresh too if you want to. Um, and then some sort of uh, either cheese or cheese substitute um, and a uh, some chipotle peppers in a dough. Yes, that's the best. Okay, so I love those. And that makes this really Ooh, different. It does, the chipotle if is If you guys fire. are not a big fan of eating um, spicy, you could leave this out, but I have to say that this is definitely what makes the uh, recipe. So we're just gonna cut up an onion. Um, you can use less if you want. Again, you guys can modify this. Um, now, one of the things that's interesting about onions and garlic is if any of you guys are I'm having a hard time relaxing. If you're a little hypertensive, if you have a hard time um, sleeping, 
uh, they actually are pretty stimulating. So if you want to, you know, avoid having these foods late at night, or if you're feeling extra stressed, um, that's actually something really interesting to think about in Eastern medicine. Yeah. Um, I was watching this incredible uh, show. Uh, I actually think it was Chef's Table on Netflix. Um, and they had this in beautiful monk, and she was saying that they don't use any uh, chili, no onions, no garlic yep. um, in the food that they make um, because it, it actually stops their ability to meditate as much as they do. I want to share a fun fact. When I cut onions and I start to cry, I do my Academy Award winning uh, moments of tears <laughs> where I'm like... <laughs> And I try to beat myself every time on like the best cry of the century. So I'm not close enough right now to do that for you, but maybe another time. I'm not actually crying right now. So I'm also getting two garlics together. Nicole, you can help me out. Please. So can you put some coconut oil in the pot for me? About yes. a tablespoon. Um, I said this in my upper, other episodes. I'll probably say this in every one for you guys to think about. So I cook most of my food with coconut oil or a um, room temperature uh, solid oil. And um, that's because when you heat it, it doesn't get carcinogenic. The fat chains don't actually break down um, in a way that's harmful for the body. I am not a scientist. There are people that explain this so much better than me. So you, you like can turn this on? Google it. Yeah, you can turn that on. Probably on high because that burner's slow. Awesome. Um, and just melt that down for me. I will. Um, and you guys don't have to worry about cutting the garlic or the onions particularly well because... This is actually something that I'm going to blend. You can blend it or blend it in an immersion blender, so on and so forth. Um, and so I just give it a coarse chop and get it together. And then you can, you've turned that on. So yes, I'm just going to throw this in. Yep. I can watch it too, please. Okay, so that's a whole onions and garlic. And Nicole's going to stir that around that's for it, me. That's a little. All right. just gonna want that to saute down just pretty much till it's translucent we're not really looking to get it brown or anything um, and I'm also pretty conscientious about how much sodium goes into this dish because the canned tomatoes and the adobo tends to be pretty salty um, so I don't think that you guys really need to add a lot of salt you can taste it and, and get it to your liking um, but that is you know all we really need to do Awesome. In the meantime, um, let's talk about the other stuff we're doing. So this is not a very complicated dish. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, so your main components, your substitute for the noodles, and this is why it's fun and it helps create a relationship with food again, right? Is that we're using vegetable base here. And so it creates a lot of food. It's got a lot of vitamins in it. It's really nurturing. It's really comforting, comforting to eat. Um, so if you guys have a mandolin, um, and you notice I'm throwing everything in the sink, I like to have a garbage bowl, right? So you can have, I use a recycled container for that. You guys can use a bowl, whatever you want. It allows you to move around and not have to run to the garbage all the time. So um, you guys can either use a mandolin or you can cut it by hand if you are comfortable and used to doing this. I think that a mandolin is a good idea. Um, <laughs> I have done this a lot Not of times. You. Oh, you guys um, at home. Guys yeah. At home. And it's also important that they're pretty even. So see, for me, it's really easy to do this because I'm really used to doing really it. Good at that. Um, but I definitely think that if you guys can do a home mandolin, um, that's a good idea. Thank you, babe, for checking in on that. So this is one of your, and I've got some ready already, right? So the other component to your noodles, and we're going to do it in layers, is sweet potatoes. So I've got these sweet potatoes washed, and they're organic. Um, potatoes, are you crying? Oh, you are really crying. Stop it. <laughs> okay, sorry, I really am crying. She's a hard guest to have because she's very silly. It's going to be okay. Um... So if you guys uh, want to use a peeler, you can. Um, my mom, when I was a little girl, taught me how to just use um, a small peeling knife. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. You want to peel it. Um, potatoes are really important to get organic. So that's one of the major foods. Even if you feel like you, all of the food we use pretty much is organic. But if you guys, and local, but if you don't have access to it or you don't want to use only organic, um, I would say at least try to make sure that your potatoes are. Um, you do want to peel these because you're making a lasagna, and so if you've got the, the peel on, when you cut it, it's actually going to tear. 
um, and it's going to be stringy in your food, right? So the peel does have, if you're getting a good quality potato, it does have a lot of um, nutrients in it, but this is not the dish for that texturally and structurally. So I definitely recommend you guys peel it. Now, when you cut it, you can do it either two, uh, one or two ways. You can either cut it the same way that I uh, just showed you the zucchini, right? But that's much, much harder if you don't have a mandolin. Or to make it simpler and safer for you, you can actually just lay the potato down flat. Here I already have an organic flat spot, or you can just take a tiny piece off, make sure that doesn't wobble, right? Um, make sure if you guys tuck, right? I don't know if you guys are familiar with all your safety regulations for cutting. Um, <laughs> and I just try to get these pretty even. I would say mm, maybe, I don't know, eighth of an inch or so, eighth to quarter inch. Okay, so, and these are fine because you can just lay and stack these as you need. I'm actually gonna prepare, oh, I can do them. Okay. So, you know, it's interesting because food, Nicole was talking about this and we've talked about it before. The way that we engage with our food and how much we're involved with our cooking changes the way that our body reacts to it tremendously. Yes. So one of the interesting things uh, and currently we're filming this during a time where a lot of you guys are home um, and there's a lot of things going on. It's a really nice opportunity since you can't access food out as much anymore to take the time to quietly cook and connect yeah. with your food and the things that are going in your body. A lot of people are worried right now about their health. They're worried about, um, and you can just turn this to the side and cut it that way too. You're worried about uh, keeping yourselves um, in a strong state with all the things that are shifting and going on. And I think a huge part of that has to do with the way that we are feeding ourselves. Okay, I'm gonna have you, Nicole, can you go ahead and put, or you know what, yeah. I'm gonna do it. Okay. We're gonna put, Look how pretty that is. like I said, mm -hmm. Ooh, that's perfect. Like I said, we're gonna put about, six cups five four to six cups depends on the size you want i don't mind having extra sauce of tomato oh yeah right and if you do fresh tomatoes because you guys have a tomato garden or it's that time of the year peel them right that's a big thing um so that you don't have the skins and the sauce is bad for digestion it's also difficult to uh it's also difficult to get it out of your teeth and the food and it texturally affects things can I share a fun fact with everyone? Uh, so please. the fact that we're using vegetables, there's so much water in the zucchini and water, a certain amount of water in all these, all vegetables. And because our, uh, what we say, what we're feeling, um, can actually change the structure of water. If you guys don't know about Dr. Emoto, he did a great study where he put um, love underneath some water, like the word love and hate and did different words. And if, uh, then they froze it. And when they looked under a microscope at it, you could see like love and compassion were these beautiful, like they look like snowflakes and all of them were different and like hatred and all those other things. The water just turned murky and disgusting. And so when Dove and I are cooking, we're putting so much love into the food that you could, you could taste the difference in the food, especially like we have, um, there's some small businesses when we lived in South Florida where we would go to the Israeli place. I don't remember the name of that place, but yeah. anyways, their food was so lit because they just put so much love into their food. And so understanding that however you're feeling at the time that you're cooking your food, if you're really pissed off, you won't get a bowl full of hate, right? And it's gonna be murky and not right. So just think about like really resetting yourself before you cook and you put your hands on your food and really setting an intention for the food for yourself. Um, because I love that saying, like, you are what you eat, but you're also like, what you are what you think. And so we can put that into the food. And so I know my wife, when she cooks for a bunch of people, she's loading that bad boy up with food and everyone enjoys uh, her food. And it's, it's a beautiful love, time. With love, you mean? With love. Am I loading it with love? You're loading it with love. <laughs> I mean, um, I am no. loading it with food too. But... I meant to say love. <laughs> Lovely food. Full of love. Um, it really makes a difference. You know, I have um, a local farm here, an organic farm that I'm going to uh, hopefully be inviting you guys on one of these episodes to check out. Um, you know, and I eat a, 
only are getting food mostly and so I'm used to that but I can actually tell the difference depending on where it's grown and I try exclusively to get my food from this farm not because they sponsor me or because of anything like that but because the farmer that owns this this farm and and, and farms this land um, inserts a tremendous amount of love yeah, and the same food you know grown within a 60 mile radius of other farms that are also organic tastes completely different yes um so it matters to me a lot to start to be in touch enough um you know and something interesting that's coming up for me to say to you guys is you know what right now we're talking about making a dish everything right except for three items i will have completely made and developed in my home right so meaning you could make the cheese or the cheese substitute at home that's absolutely possible um you could dry your own chipotle peppers right i mean this is you could do a hundred percent from scratch right but i have in this case um boxed tomatoes and they have nothing in them except for salt right so i checked that i do have uh chipotle peppers and i do have a cheese that's got minimal ingredients and we'll talk to that in a minute um and so you know Having said that, when we have food with a lot of chemicals or a lot of components, or additives or preservatives, actually affects our palate. Yes. So we don't taste these things so deeply anymore. We have a different relationship. And I read an interesting study that actually said that when we eat um, a lot of fast food and things like that, when there are so many of certain additives that we become really highly addicted to, when you transition, all right, and we'll talk more about that in the future in other episodes when we're talking about children's food and things like that, um, you know, we get so, our palate gets so affected that when, you know, if you've ever tried to give somebody something homemade and they're not really used to eating homemade or something organic, yeah, could you stir that for me, yeah. darling? Yep. Yeah. Um, they don't really like it or they say like it's bland or they say, you know, even when it's really not, it takes 30 days for your palate to change once you've been eating fast food and things like that to be able to actually, or high preservative box foods, frozen foods, to be able to even taste it. So we're talking about being able to feel the vibration and the taste of our food, but we're increasingly further and further away from that. Yeah, right? before I met her, believe it or not, like my whole life I was an athlete, but I did not eat well. Like I ate like pretty gross stuff and fast food and different things. So when I met Dove and Dove would make like really beautiful meals, I couldn't, you know, taste really because of all the stuff that I had in my body and the toxins. You used to add ketchup. Dad. I used to add ketchup. That's what the, this whole story, <laughs> this whole story was around the ketchup. And she would make these beautiful meals with herbs in it. So like, you know, cause your palate, like when you have herbs, like bong, 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 all these flavors. And again, you're doing this dance with food, like get crazy with it. And I'm just like, <laughs> and she's just like, so then finally we got me to only doing it, you know, with, with certain foods. And then finally, I don't even have ketchup in my house today, peeps. <laughs> I know, and when, when she does want it for something, I have nothing to say cause she gets an organic sugar-free one and it's, she's not craving it anymore. Right, Truth. but it was everything was boring, right? And what she was craving was pouring sugar on everything. Yeah, and that's some chemicals she, that that's I was probably addicted to. Yeah, that's what she really wanted. And actually, it's really funny because in our last episode that we had um, Sarah on, and we were talking about momentarily, we were talking about the chemicals and things. Um, one of the things she shared with me prior to the show, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bump in you. You could do it. Uh, day. Just one thing, me. one thing she showed me prior to the show, she showed Nicole and I, was that there is a uh, studies that actually show comparatively um, some American same products, right? So same exact product, uh, same exact brand, um, different country, and it blew me away. Blew me away. So I'd ask you guys to like check your labels. You know, if you're expecting your label to say two ingredients or one ingredient because you think that's what's in there and all of a sudden there's 14 yeah. and you're not sure why, yep. you know, one of those 14 or all 14 of those things is what you're gravitating towards, right? Yes. Um, and so being able to understand that, we're now having a consciousness. Wow, my body's craving something. My body is wanting something, yeah. you know, that doesn't have to do with anything. Now, I want to bring us to uh, Ooh, the Chipotle's because we were not adding them. Yep. Um, and so this is up to you guys, right? So this is Chipotle and adobo. That means that it's got sauce and different seasonings. I try to look for the ones that have the most limited amount of stuff. We like things really hot. And this is a lot of sauce. So I am going to probably use three entire peppers. Um, and then I will use some of the sauce. The sauce also has some vinegar um, oh, in it. So and good. so it does give you know, a little bit of tang. <laughs> Do and not eat a whole chipotle. Oh, you're gonna blend this. So. I am gonna blend okay. this. <laughs> Right. And I'm just going to get this in here for a few minutes. I wish we had smell technology. 
I don't know, maybe one day. What do you think, Brittany? Does it smell good? Mm-hmm. Do you like Chipotle? I do. Girl, you gonna get some of that. <laughs> you gonna get it. <laughs> I did not know Nicole was gonna be comedic relief today, but I think that any of you guys well, that know us probably that know I, that. But I, I get to today. It's, it's you do. You get you're, to be as funny and it as it gets too hot in here, girl. No, you, you know, can't leave kitchen. your the chef here. Yet. <laughs> okay, she's like, so, I'll kick you out first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna also, while that sauce is finishing up, it really only needs to cook about 10, 15 minutes because what you're gonna do is blend it down and you're gonna cook it in the oven. Um, I'm gonna ask you to put the oven on, uh, let's get the oven on 375. Yes. Um, so it's about 375, your oven should be on. Um, if you are worried about your pan not being deep enough, you could put like a rack underneath it or some foil. Sometimes this leaks over, right, as you're playing with the consistency yes. and so on. What we do wanna do though, because Nicole was talking about water, right? So all of these things have a tremendous amount of water in them. So you wanna reduce some of it in order to not cause um, it to be, you know, really actually right. runny. So one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna saute down the spinach. All I'm gonna do is just put it in a hot pan and let it start sauteing. And this is an entire large container of spinach, but Believe it or not, you know, this is going to cook down to nothing. If you guys know spinach, is mostly water. Um, and so I'm gonna start putting this in layers. Well, actually, it looks like I might be able to get the entire thing in here. Um, I really don't need any oil for this. You can add some um, coconut oil or some butter, but I'm just trying to get it hot, wilt it down, and then get that water to actually dissipate out. Would you like me to put this on top just to get it? Sure, you can do that. Okay. This way it'll kind of steam its sure. own essence. I'm letting Nicole co-cook with me today. Um, and so essence. you wanna just kind of pay attention to that for me. Okay, so this only takes a quick second to cook and you see there's tons of water in here. So I'm going to let this cook off. Yep. And actually we can just leave it here to, actually I'll drain some of this out. This one is yeah, particularly water. That's because I brought up water. And they were like, you want to see how much water? I'm going to show you. Also, Nicole had covered it. And although that helps the wilt wilting process quicker, it does produce a steaming effect. And doesn't cook So off. it doesn't actually cook off. Um, so, you know. Maybe just put it on for a little less time. And I think that you don't even need to have it on. So we'll let this, but what I want to do now is, so I have an immersion blender. You can use a regular blender. You can use a food processor. Um, you can really use anything you want. Um, and I'm going to turn this off and the amazing thing about this handy dandy little guy is I really don't have, oh, thank oh, you. God, nails. I can do anything with my I nails, know, but I'm just being of service to you, sweet thing. When your uh, wife is the person that is actually your guest, so get a massage. This thing is beautiful. Why don't you tell us a little bit more, Nicole? If you're wanting to, yeah, as I go on this down. Um, can I finish with this? I'm curious for you to share with people about. You were talking about being an athlete when you were younger and your relationship with food younger and then how that kind of broke down for you. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to work for you if you don't feel loud. Oh, is that just a tiny bit? Are you That's sure? That's it, guys. Yeah, so it's interesting. I had a food addiction when I was younger. I used to stress eat and binge eat, and I played um, a little bit of professional soccer. I played soccer from six years old till college, and um, my relationship was with food was to just like shove it down, like I shoved my emotions down. So it was very much linked to that. Mm -hmm. And um, I would eat like, I mean, just to give you an example, like I would, I would eat like a whole whopper with fries and like a 20 piece chicken nuggets with a soda and like be like sick, but I would, but I would do that. And I would run, you know, that day, like six to 10 miles. And so it didn't matter, but um, you know, uh, I, that was my relationship with food up until, about 18 years old and then I met someone who had bulimia and I started to watch her and it just I was enticed by that I was like wow I could I could have this experience with binging and then purging mm -hmm. and um because there was this moment of not being able to release my emotions I kept stuffing and I, I think I was getting to the point where I was gonna you know implode explode and this was right about the time that my drug addiction started so it was like hand in hand together these two mechanisms to really deal and cope with um, not coping with my emotions. 
And so from about 18 for like the next 10 years for, uh, I, I was bulimic and I had an awful relationship with myself and I had an awful relationship with food. Um, I can tell you from experience that my shame and guilt around having an eating disorder was like 10 to 20 to 30 times harder than it was, um, you know, with my drug addiction because I couldn't understand how I just felt so silly and ridiculous that I couldn't control something as simple as food and something that we need to nourish our bodies. And mm. so it was um, a really hard time. And I remember when I met Dove shortly after meeting her, we like, you know, we, we were, did the lesbian thing where we met, we, we moved in and we wed very quickly. <laughs> we you hauled it baby and um shortly after we we started living together dove saw that i had all kinds of issues and saw you know my drug addiction face you know face on and um i don't even think that's a, like head on, head on face on head on and um saw you know the the stuff around my eating disorder and immediately was like you need to get help and that was when I said yes, right? It was just this moment of seeing this being like really, I can't tell you how far she went to get me help, to, to, to retrieve the money, the finances, to put me in this special place to go for my eating disorder. Uh, she, she just went hardcore with my family. Like she went for it because she was like, if you don't get help, you're gonna die. And it was true, that's how bad it was. And so I went to this beautiful holistic place for my eating disorder and for my addiction where I began to take all these vitamins and they had beautiful amino acid treatments and they, we got massages and acupuncture and all kinds of things like that. And the food was organic and healthy. And so I had like this, whoa, okay. And I wasn't really gaining any weight at the time. And I just was having this kind of new relationship with everything for that matter, not just food. And, and I think that's the way we shift and change is when we build new relationships with things. We look at things differently. And so I had shame around myself. Mm. I had shame around food. I was so pissed off at food. I hated it. Um, I learned what foods were going to make me have hunger, you know, make me hungry. So sugar, wheat, um, I, I, those are the main two things for me. Like when I right. got off sugar and wheat, um, and now I have like a little bit of fruit here and there. Um, I noticed that whenever I would go back to having wheat or back to having sugar, my, I would just like be ravenous. I would want to like devour things, you time. know, and I give myself a break during my moon, um, you know, to just allow myself to eat certain things. And I make sure huh. that there are certain days of the week where I allow myself to have things that I wouldn't normally have so that I can, can I can play with that too. So it doesn't feel restricted and, um, because that almost can be an obsession too when we restrict so much. Mm -hmm. It becomes like we're boxed in and we have to have a flow of, you know. And so for some of you who have eating disorders, maybe overeating or um, you may have to take that part slow. I've seen people needing to get off of sugar and wheat for, for years um, because they just couldn't yeah. control themselves. And so whatever you have to do is, you know, what you have to you do. You know, when Nicole was speaking, one of the things I was thinking about is, is frequency too, right? So she was describing a lot of shame and guilt. Shame and guilt is really low frequency experience. So dipping the actual frequency in your body down low um, and food has a frequency as well. So when we're already struggling with a process and then we're putting things into our body that have a low frequency, you know, it's continuing the pattern of this painful, there's the oven letting us know it's hot, uh, the, the painful dip which then brings us into a depressive, you know, anxious and, and avoidant and heavy place in our lives. So for me, there's really a lot there um, to finding things that then you could put in your body and help to counter that. Um, you know, and she spoke about finding ways to supplement the brain and all of that, but one of the main ways that we can do that um, is through food and, and what we put into our body on a daily basis and how we react to that. So we're gonna start putting this together. Um, and, and you know, we are partners and we have been together a really long time, so I mean, we really like to cook together. Yes, we do. It's and, one of my favorite things. You know, it's something, so I put this sauce um, through that immersion blender, like I said. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a layer. Very simple, probably gonna make a mess. This is a messy thing. I've yeah, got sauce all it. over the floor already. Um, and you're just gonna ladle. Life's messy, life's messy. No, you're not kidding though, it right? Is. It is. It's not about being perfect and it's no. a journey. And the other thing Nicole was talking about is like, you know, the things she did to help that and that for some of you, it's a journey. Well, guess what? For all of you, it's a journey. Yes. Our relationship, every one of us to food is a journey. 
Um, and so no matter where you are with the process, whether you're feeling good about what you do, not good, you're sitting on here going, I don't cook anything on my own. You're sitting on here saying, I don't know how to have a healthy relationship with food. You know, it is all a process. And being able to give yourself time to see it as an evolution is really vital. So you're just gonna put a layer down of the potato. We're probably going to need, um, for this big pan, probably about four large ones. So, and also I just wanted to say for, for all of you that are in this uh, conscious ascension process, these roots are beautiful for grounding your, yes. your essence. Um, I think that potatoes, sweet potatoes have been uh, a saving grace at times where I crave them when I kind of feel like, a, you know, I'm a little spacey. I'm traveling a little bit too much. It's like puts my feet back on the ground. Sure. And it's a great carb. It's a great carbohydrate. So um, I don't eat grains or wheat. Um, sometimes I'll eat some brown rice or rice. Um, so basically I'm getting my carbohydrates from potatoes, sweet potato, and, and some other, um, sorry, some other things like I love millet, uh, quinoa. Um, so all I'm doing here is I'm just going to add the um, spinach in as well. You see that it just cooked down to just about nothing. Um, and you could do kale in this, you could do mushrooms. The thing is that I've just started sticking to the same exact thing that I've done for years because now we get used to that, right? And this is hot, but my hands are used to everything and I washed them. Wash your hands! <laughs> Hashtag wash your hands. Um, always wash your hands when you're cooking anyway. A lot of the things that we're needing to do now that the world is becoming aware of different challenges um, and the uh, situation we're in as a planet are things you should be doing anyway, right? You should wash your food, wash your hands, uh, be conscious, don't put things in your mouth, don't touch your nose when you're in public. I mean, these are kind of, right? There's things I learned living in, uh, living in India as a kid. Dad has to remind me on the, on the regular. I have to remind her all the time. Okay, so this is a smoked Gouda, um, but this is a plant-based cheese. Um, the reason this recipe started with plant-based cheese was not at the time that Nicole and I were not eating dairy when I made this recipe, but actually we had a really good friend that wasn't and we wanted to uh, accommodate her. So the recipe kind of became this beautiful thing and now I like to have it this way no matter where we are in our food eating processes. Although um, I try to watch now the thing about plant-based cheese that I want you guys to be really aware of. Um, and so it is, uh, the paradox of this is just because something is vegan, for instance, it doesn't mean that thing is healthy. Yes. Okay, now careful with what I just said. I didn't say that being vegan isn't healthy. I just said because it is vegan, it doesn't mean it's healthy. Okay, so, right, so we can eat all sorts of things that are inflammatory and have chemicals and have, uh, pesticides and yada, 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 and it can be vegan, because it just means that it doesn't have any animal products in it, okay? So I want you to have conscientiousness about what you're doing. So now with cheeses, um, the problem is that they have a lot of things in them. This is a pretty basic cheese. Uh, I don't have the wrapper right now, but I'm pretty sure it's just uh, mainly like coconut oil and, and things like that and doesn't have a lot in it. And I'm still aware of how much of it I use because I'm not exactly sure how it's processed. Some of you guys might make it at home or you have a recipe. This particular cheese, I'm not endorsing any brands, um, is Follow Your Heart. I've used Daya. Um, compare the labels, see what works. They both melt well. Yeah. Um, I think the Daya actually maybe melts a little bit better than it the does. Follow Your Heart. I like the taste on the Follow Your Heart better. Um, so that's why I use that one. And I use the smoked Gouda because I think it works really, really nice with the um, sauce uh, and the Chipotle flavoring yeah, in this. Good. Mm -hmm. But you can do whatever you like. You can play with this. And if you guys don't want to do a plant-based cheese, you really don't have to. You could do this the same way you would do a lasagna. You could go ahead and throw in, um, you know, ricotta. You could also throw in cashew ricotta. Um, you can play with this. This is my basic recipe. So you saw that I did a layer. It's basically the same thing as a regular lasagna. You layer in accordance with what you want. I did sweet potato and then I did zucchini, spinach, cheese, and that's all on a bed of sauce. Nicole's going to bring me some more sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna jump in here. Both Let's of get us crazy. Get crazy together. Yes. As we and actually, I've done this one before with different color sweet potatoes. Oh, yeah. They're different. So this one is kind of like the average yellow sweet potato, but um, if you use a white one, um, those are really cool. They taste more like chestnuts. They're way starchier and they're way sweeter. So I wouldn't do only that. Let's double time. 
Well, let's do it. Let's get it done. <laughs> We're twinning. I got lipstick on you and I got makeup on me. Before. Perfect. Um, I love that. I think cooking with your partner is a really nice thing to do. It is. Because you can either yeah, kick good. each other's butt in the kitchen or you could just love on each other. No, I'm just kidding. And I think we do a pretty good job. No, we do for the most part. Um, it's a nice creative process to do together. So this is really this is just about full. Yep. So why don't we put the last bits of spinach on here? Yep. I got you. Where are you going? Yeah, I can do it. One of the benefits of having these, um, well, they're really short for me right now, but people ask me all the time about my claws, and I'm like, well, they come in handy for lots of different things. So this is a large, I think I might have mentioned it's a really large container of spinach, but you see it really comes down to nothing. I think that you could it do really um, another type of green in here, like a Swiss chard. I don't mm. know that I would do kale because it's really um, rough and thick, and I think that that might not be as nice um, since everything really cooks down to a very soft um, texture. Yeah, and those zucchinis are really good. You want to just put more? There's this left. Yeah, we can just layer that. Okay. I think that's plenty, that's plenty. because that um, I'll make a small batch with whatever's left over. So for your pan, you can make these in little batches. You can make them in big batches. Foil the top, right? Yes. Well, we can do that. So sometimes I foil the top and sometimes I don't, but I think that it actually comes out a little bit better if you don't foil the top because you don't really want that steaming process we were talking about. Yeah, that's and when true. you foil the top, if your ingredients are a little bit on the wet side, right? Like, so for instance, sometimes your tomato sauce is going to be um, more dry depending on how long you cook it. Um, and sometimes it's going to be runnier. Um, so this is actually a little bit runnier, not runnier than I normally make it, but on the runnier side is what I mean to say. So I definitely would not cover this one um, because I think if you look at the sides, I'll pick it up in a second, you're going to see how far up the sides. Oh, yeah, I'll show you. I can't How far up the sides the liquid is already going. And then once you get that cooking, it's, it's going to be even more. So what I am going to do, though, you can put one is I'm things on, underneath it. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's what I said before, too. If you guys need to put something underneath, this one's not going to overflow. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put the cheese layer on the top because I'm not using a regular cheese. Um, and even if you were using a regular cheese, it'd probably be drying out by then. So the layer inside is fine. I'll let this cook. I'm going to throw this in the oven. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to put this in the oven. And we will leave it in there at 375 for about an hour. I would say probably about... Hmm, 20 minutes before it's done, I'm gonna cover the top with cheese, let it finish some more. The way you guys know it's done is you can actually just stick um, a knife in it, see if everything is tender all the way through. It's not giving you any resistance. You really can't mess it up. Um, if you overcook it, it's just gonna be soft. But I would say about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, um, and you should be good depending on the thickness of your vegetables. Right. So it's been about an hour, because this was a pretty big yes. lasagna. And I also gave it a few minutes to cool in here. The magic of internet. Get all this beauty out. Also have a little one in there hiding. And so you can see that the cheese on this one doesn't get as stringy, but it does look nice and melty and good and delicious. And luckily we didn't cover it because as I said, it was on the slightly runnier side. Um, I think this is Nicole's portion. Yeah, this is all Because <laughs> you love Dove this gets stuff so much. In there. And I will take this into my bedroom. But the, it in my lap. But the cool thing about this, though, is you can. Yeah, not with this. Just take it out. Okay, it yeah, out. good Nicole point. size bowl. And, but yeah. that's, that's like part of the, the appeal of this dish is like, I wanted to make something. And I remember it was winter, I think, when yeah. I did this. And we were talking about it. We're like, why is the only time that you can just gorge yourself on something yeah. like a salad and actually our friend who was vegan who we we, we made this for i mean she she tore it up too she tore it yes. up yes yeah so definitely she make extra well. people because this is you know this is for, all right so let me uh you want to get us some plates we're gonna plates. invite you guys to do some prayer with us oh. i'm gonna bring this bad boy over here we're gonna do a little informal family style cutting yes. All right, let's see if we can't get, oh yeah, okay. So I was because right, this is definitely, oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And if you guys see this, 
the sauce actually gets like, it almost looks like it's got thickener or dairy in it. And what that is, is it's the starch from the potatoes then mixed with some of that cheese. Uh, cheese. The cheese. The cheese. Um, Ooh, look at that. I'm glad that piece came out good exactly. for you because this one's about to be a mess. I'll take this one. I'll, I'll take the, the messy one. Yeah, you will. I'm messy for you. <laughs> oh, die. You said it before, life's messy. It is messy. Oh, no, actually, this is good. No, that's a pretty piece, actually. Beautiful. Oof. All right. Can we have some forks, baby? I did. I brought them to the table. Okay. Which one do you actually want? Let's go to the table. Do you want the prettier one or the messy one? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll take the messy one. Come and sit down with you. Oh, beautiful. <sighs> okay, so first off, what's really important mm. to do is to smell it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we look like crazy people, but there's a real oh. reason for that, right? And so. Also, too, this is really hot, but sometimes I like to like eat with my hands. I'll eat with my left hand because I'm right-handed, um, just to feel it. And but right now, maybe with everything that's going on, you may not want to eat with your hands. Um, <laughs> and the next, the next thing we want to do is uh, is pray over the food. Yeah. Um, if you're eating out. Oftentimes they're using things that you didn't use in your home, like, you know, we use the coconut oil. They're using other oils and other mm. chemicals and things that might not be good. So it's good to pray over your food even more so just to ask that um, you transmute the food, yes. allow for, uh, you know, some kind of transitioning from all those chemicals. And so we're so powerful. We're so, so powerful. We can do that. Um, I actually really love what you just said, and I want to say something more to that, right? Please. So where this show is not only about food, right? It connects to what Nicole and I do. Nicole and I alchemize and transmute energy. We do that with people's trauma. We do it with, um, you know, belief systems. We help people around finances. And so the thing is, is that everything, right? We have, we have impact on everything and our energy and our thoughts and our manifestation and the belief systems and the mm. statements and the prayers that we make alter the physical reality, yes. right? All is mind. It starts with mind, right? We talk about universal principles and then we come into the altering of the substances. So mm. when you think about praying before you eat and praying on and with your food, um, you're talking about creating a whole shift in genetic structure. Yeah. And so now because we know that this is our meal um, and that we cooked it and we don't have to alchemize anything, this prayer is is great deal about the gratitude. The gratitude and the connection. Yes. And actually also asking, I mean, unfortunately in this day and age, our vegetables and our food doesn't have what it used to. It's not the quality that yep. it used to, even when we get the very, very best. So that's why a lot of people have to take supplements and yes. so on and so forth. So asking that this nurture us to the utmost, right? That it give us everything that we need. And then we also give gratitude for it um, and that we're able to receive it. Um, and Nicole was getting on something too. If you guys are eating out, um, being able to uh, smell, this is a really great thing that I got from a dear, dear friend that hopefully is on season two, yes. um, who is a chef and a food healer. Um, and she explained to me, uh, Hannah, we love you. We love you, uh, She explained to me that actually if you smell your food when you go out to eat, and I know some people are going to be like, I don't know if I want to be that person. Uh, but if you smell, smell your food for <laughs> two to three minutes. Oh, what it's actually going to do, it's going to allow that enzyme process that your body is mm. doing, right? So Nicole and I, we've been in the house with this food. We've been touching it all day. So our body's primed. It's like, I yeah. am ready for all of this stuff. I'm ready for these sweet potatoes. I'm ready for this meal. Like I know what I'm getting into. We touched it. The enzymes were produced in our body, through our skin, through our smell. But when you go out to eat, there was no relationship to that meal. So when you pause and you allow yourself, you allow it to go through your senses of smell, mm. you actually start to produce, which allows your digestion to have the best impact and process. Yes. So I want to share that with you guys. I love that. Um, and now we're inviting you into a special moment for us, which yes. is our, our prayer before we eat. And then I get to get Nicole's seal of <sighs> approval on this lasagna. <laughs> oh. oh, I just want to bring in... Um... Just love frequency and we just thank Father God and Mother God for this meal and I think the minerals that nourished, um, mm. actually you know what, I'm going to thank Mother Earth first, mm. that nourished the minerals, that nourished the veggies and that allowed for us to create this oh, beautiful meal and I'm grateful that we even get to, you know, taste this food and for 
uh, my home and my family. And I just ask that as I nourish my body and as Doug nourishes her body, that that nourishes this planet and nourishes the collective. And yes, nourish my body, baby. And I love you. Amen. Oh, we love you. I, I love, love that. that. Tell him the food we love. I love that. Okay, all right. Now right let me get it with the cheese and a good piece of that. They're always different, so I'm wondering how you think of what you think about this. All right, one. let's see. This was our on I tasted the one. sauce before, and it's a little extra spicy. Oh, so yeah. So three is definitely going to make it real hot because I was working with about six Yeah, it was, it's a little, it got a little kick. Ready? So if you don't want the kick. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's good. <laughs> okay, but oh god, it's so good. So it does have kick. Yeah. Mm, but here's the it's thing: not too hot. the sweet potatoes are sweet and they're starch, so they absorb a lot of that impact. And then you get the zucchini and the spinach. Yes. Um, and then you've got the creaminess from the cheese. So I would it's say a, this is definitely three chipotles with six cups of tomato is definitely on the hot side, though, right? Like, so it's definitely not too hot for me. Um, but we eat a lot of chili at home. So if you're thinking that you're sensitive, if you're really, really sensitive, you can leave it out. If you're, but I do recommend you try to put a little bit. If you're kind of sensitive, go with one. I think that like kids that are adventurous and eat everything would probably be able to handle that one. Uh, oh no, that had a little bit more kick. All right. Yeah, it is hot. this is definitely on the hot side. I felt it in my throat. I was like, oh, okay. But having said that, you know, you just talked about, uh, you just talked about maybe not eating with our hands right now because of immunity stuff. Well, chili is a really great immunity booster. Um, and actually what you could do is you could do a little less of the chipotle, do the chipotle for flavoring and do some cayenne in this because cayenne is incredible for the metabolism, mm -hmm. um, warming the body, boosting the immune system. So there's a lot in this that I think is also really powerful immunity food for right now. Um, so I think this yeah. would be a great idea. And having hot foods right now um, and it's a lot important. of liquids, it's really, really important. So thank you guys for thank coming. Um, I hope that Nicole cooks again with me. Yes. Um, because she's actually a really good cook. Maybe I can get her to cook on one of these episodes. Um, and thank you for coming to our kitchen. Please make sure that you uh, follow, uh, like, or subscribe wherever you're finding this information. Um, and you check out any past episodes you've missed and that you tune in to all of the next ones. See you later. Bye. Thank you.